On Monday, Tsipras, the Greek Prime Minister, was forced into accepting terms that he had rejected only two weeks before and that were rejected in the NO referendum, the OHI referendum, in uh, Greece. So now what? The, uh, the Syriza coalition of 18 political parties is fracturing. Already two of them, the far right and the far left, have announced that they are not going to support the bailout terms agreed by Tsipras in the, in, uh, the meeting of the Eurozone minister, Prime Ministers on Monday. Will the measures pass through the Greek Parliament? Maybe yes, maybe no. By Wednesday, by tomorrow, the Greeks should pass a series of measures including pension reform, VAT increases, uh, revamp of the statistics office and a host of other measures. By next Wednesday, they should pass another 179 measures. That is unrealistic. But even if it had been realistic, it is not quite sure that there is the political support for this. In the meantime, the finance minister of the Eurozone should find some bridge financing, some kind of money that will allow Greece to survive until it passes all these measures and until the third bailout of 86 million billion euros is agreed. Will they found, find the bridge financing? Maybe yes, maybe no. It is illegal under EU uh, terms and under the Eurozone and ECB legislation. And then there is the issue of parliaments, national parliaments. The German parliament should approve the measures, Estonian parliament should approve the measures, and another six parliaments. A total of eight parliaments should vote within less than three weeks to approve a package of 180 measures and yet another 86 billion euros to go from the pockets of taxpayers in countries, some of which are much poorer than Greece. In, from these countries to the Greek endless barrel. Will these parliaments approve these measures? Maybe yes, maybe no. Everything is up in the air. At this stage, Greece is not leaving the euro. Will it leave the euro? Most of the economists in the world, including many Nobel Prize winners like Paul Krugman, believe they will. Most of the financial institutions in the world, like Credit Suisse, fully believe they will. And all the credit rating agencies in the world, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, all of them are saying that Greece ultimately will leave the euro. But one thing is for sure, it's not going to happen now. Is it going to happen later? Maybe yes, maybe no. What is sure? Maybe. So where are we? The thing is that Greece may have had a European past, but it is facing most definitely a sub-Saharan African future. Why? Greece is a hopeless case, economically, politically. Start with the fact that there is no Greek economy. Less than 13%, 1-3% of the GDP, the total economic output of Greece, is exports. Compare it to Germany, where close to 90% of GDP is involved in exports. Compare it to the United Kingdom, compare it to Italy, where 70% of GDP is exports. Greece does not export. It has no manufacturing sector. It has no industry. It used to have a shipping industry and it doesn't anymore. Greece is, co consists mainly of tourists and the small shops that cater to tourists. That is not a way to build an economy. And because there's no economy, there are no taxes. Greece collects 34% of its GDP in taxes compared to 38% the European average and 41% even in a country like Italy. The black economy in Greece is more than 25% of the total economy. That is not a way to run a country. And then because there's no taxes, there, is a, there are huge budget deficits. The budget deficit in Greece until a year ago was minus 8% of GDP, sometimes minus 10%. A year ago, because of austerity measures, the budget turned from deficit to surplus of 1.5%, and then Tsipras was elected, and again the budget is minus 5% deficit. So there is no, there's no budget surplus to finance infrastructure projects, to encourage research and development, to build new industries. Everything goes to pay salaries, pensions, and other current expenses. It's no way to run a government. And then there is the issue of the size of the government. 
The government in Greece is one million people strong. One million out of 11 million people, of which six million are under the age of 25. So one of every three adults works in the government. 800,000 in the central government, 200,000 in municipalities and other related uh, public administration posts. That is totally unsustainable. It is something like three to five times the European average, even in a country like Sweden, where the government is pretty big. So put all of this together, and it seems that Greece has serious structural problems that cannot be resolved by any bailout or by any short-term measures. And now to Greek banks. Greek banks have two problems. As usual in Greece, it's never a single problem. Greek banks have two problems. One of them is that they are illiquid. In other words, they don't have enough money to pay the depositors. They don't have enough money to give to people. That's why today people can withdraw only 60 euros a day from ATMs. Those who work, only 40% only of ATMs are still working. So there's no money inside the banks to give to the people who gave them money to begin with. Consequently, 40 billion euros left Greece from February until today. We call this capital flight. If anyone is kidding himself that this money is coming back, they don't know Greeks and they don't know Greece. This money is not coming back anytime soon. On the very contrary, when the banks reopen for business, we could expect another 20, 30 billion euros to leave Greece immediately. The second problem is that banks don't have enough capital. We call it solvency. The banks are insolvent. How much capital the banks need? According to the Basel III criteria, which are the criteria that define how much capital a bank needs in order to operate without risk, according to this criteria, the, the Greek banks need 60 billion euros. I repeat, 60 billion euros, not 25 billion as was promised in the bailout. So even if a bailout goes through, which is a big if, the money promised to the banks is not enough. And finally, of course, there is the issue of the debt burden, the famous uh, Greek debt. Greeks owe about 340 billion euros. Some of it to other governments in bilateral agreements, some of it to bondholders, privates, individuals, pension funds, banks, uh, brokers who bought Greek government bonds. Some of it to their own banks. The Greek government owes 11 billion euros to their own banks. And a lot of it to private Greek citizens. So we are talking 340 billion. This 340 billion should be paid over the next 30 years. So it's not such a, such a big deal. Less than 3% of GDP of Greece goes to pay debts back. So it's not a big burden. It's not a big problem. But the Greeks insist that one third of this amount should be written off, should be deleted. That is not possible under European law. The only thing possible under European law is to postpone the payment. So instead of 30 years, it should be 50 years or 70 years or 100 years. That means that the great-great-grandchildren of Tsipras will still be paying debt long after their great-great-grandfather has passed away. And that, of course, is not a way to develop a country, to create growth in the long term. Even now, most of the money that Greece received from the EU and from the Eurozone, most of it went immediately to pay back the debts of Greece. Not a penny was invested in Greece, not a penny was used for any other purpose except to repay the banks. In the new deal which was agreed on Monday, Greece is supposed to sell 50 billion euros of assets, including some say the Acropolis, in order to use the proceeds to do what? Yes, you guessed correctly, to pay the banks and to pay the previous bailouts. Only 12.5 billion out of this 50 billion will be reinvested in Greece. The situation is bad not because there is no money. The situation is bad not because there is no political decision. The situation is bad because Greece is not an economy. Greece is not structured properly. The only way for Greece forward if it wants to survive as a functioning uh, state, is to leave the Eurozone, thereby acquiring possibilities, monetary policies and fiscal policies which are not available to it right now.